Hey guys, that's Mike. Um, I really wasn't going to do this video. Um, but I've had some comments in the peanut gallery on some of my, from the peanut gallery on some of my videos. You're going to catch cancer. Welcome to throat cancer. You're going to die from the cancer. It's going to kill you. Oh no. Well, if you know me, I usually don't start something unless I do some research first, which is what I did with the dip and the chew. I looked up the stats and how dangerous is this stuff? Because personally, I don't buy into government hype. They usually, a lot of word play, word play it going on there. So I broke it down. Of all cancers, oral cancer is quite rare. Oral cancer only makes up 3% of all cancers diagnosed in America every year. If everybody who gets diagnosed with cancer over the course of the next year, only 3% of those are going to be oral cancers. 97% of the other cancers are some other form. It's so rare, you know, 3% out of how many millions of cancer cases. Um, the top 10 cancers, let's just go through the top 10 real quick. Breast cancer, number one form of cancer in America, followed by prostate cancer. Lung cancer is number three. Lung cancer is number three, but it is the number one killer among cancers. Because once your lungs are messed up, there you go. So if you smoke cigarettes, consider stopping. Switch to something with a much lower risk, like dip and chew. Or if you want even safer risk, go with Swedish snus. Cancer rates on Swedish snus are almost non-existent. Um, they're extremely low. The Swedish have done numerous studies on that. Oral cancer, all kinds of cancer related to Swedish snus. They even did for tooth decay and gum damage, and extremely low, extremely low. 30% of the Swedish population uses Swedish snus, 30% of them. And they have some of the lowest cancer rates in, in the industrialized world. So it's a very safe product, and it's because of the way they process the tobacco. They pretty much pasteurize it. And that any of the cancer-causing substances that might be in the tobacco pretty much get cooked off or put in like a form of suspended animation to where, you know, they're inactive and rendered inert. Pretty interesting reading. After lung cancer, you got colorectal cancers, bladder cancer, endometrial cancer, which is a form of uterine cancer, kidney cancer, leukemia, liver cancer, and melanoma, which is skin cancer. Those are your top 10. Oral cancer is way down the list, way down. Like I said, 3% of all cancer cases are oral cancers. It's very rare. Let's break the numbers down a little bit more. Out of 100,000 people over the course of their lifetime, out of 100,000 people, 11.5 of them will come down with some form of oral cancer. Now, I don't like dealing in half people, so I rounded that number up to 12. So let's say 12 people out of 100,000 over the course of their lifetime will get some form of oral cancer. What percentage is that, you ask? That is 0.012%. 0 0.012%. That's very rare. Very low. Of the 12 people who will develop oral cancer, 6 or 7 of that 12 are either smokers heavy drinkers, or a combination of the two. If you smoke cigarettes, if you're a heavy drinker, which scientifically, for the purposes of the research, heavy drinking is defined for men if you have more than 15 drinks a week, which means if you have two drinks during the day after work or whatever, and you have an extra one or two on the weekends, you're considered a heavy drinker. Women. If you have eight or more drinks over the course of a, a week, you're considered a heavy drinker. You're not a raging alcoholic. You just consume slightly more than one a day. For men, slightly more than two drinks a day on average over the course of the week. That's what they define as heavy drinkers. So six or seven of that 12 people out of 100,000 over the course of their lives are either smokers, drinkers, or a combination of the two. If you drink and smoke together, you're at the front of the line for of that 12 people. Two or three of that 12 people 
will be smokeless tobacco users. So 100,000 people, 12 of them will get oral cancer in the course of their life. Six or seven are smokers or heavy drinkers or a combination. Two or three of those are smokeless tobacco users. So there is a danger. It's very small, but there is one. Two or three of those other, of the remainder of the 12, two or three of them are non-smokers who have contracted the HPV-16 virus, human pampiloma, pampiloma virus, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, strain number 16, is found to be a cause of oral cancers. And that is transmitted through sexual contact. That's the primary way it's transmitted. So yes, you can get an STD that gives you cancer. And that number is actually on the rise. A couple of articles I read, some scientists are predicting that in the next few years, the number of oral cancer cases related to the HPV-16 virus is going to overtake the number from smokeless tobacco users. And I think right now it's 2.7, 2.7, you know, some studies say 2.2 for smokeless tobacco users, and it's slightly less for the HP6 the virus. That's why I said between two and three, because that's where the number floats. There are, you know, the HPV-16 is slightly below um, uh, smokeless tobacco users, but it's on the rise and it's going to overtake it soon. Um, of that 12 people, out of 100,000 people over the course of their lifetime who get oral cancer, one will be a non-smoker with no known cause. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't mess around. Nobody knows why. They just got oral cancer. Who knows why? So, two or three people who use smokeless tobacco products will get oral cancer out of 100,000. One will get oral cancer with no known cause. So when the anti-tobacco crowd says, you are three times more likely to get oral cancer than a non-smoker. Yeah, that's true. You are up to three times more likely out of the 12 people, out of 100,000 over the course of your life. Do the math. That is a very small percentage. Very small. And oral cancer is already very rare. As, you know, 3% three, 3 out of all cancer cases are oral cancer. Very small percentage, even smaller percentage, even smaller percentage. Is there a risk from smokeless tobacco? Yes, there is. Is it as Prevalent as the anti-tobacco crowd wants to make you think. No. The cancers related to it are already extremely rare. And most of those are taken up by the smokers, the heavy drinkers, or the combination of the two. And the people who catch that virus, they're quickly overtaking the um, uh, smokeless tobacco crowd on that. So, what can we take away from this? Now, I'm not a statistician. I am not a cancer researcher. I am not a medical doctor. I am just a redneck with the ability to read and a calculator. That's all I am. So take this information at, for what it is. But I got all of these numbers off of the National Cancer Institute website. That's where I got all these numbers from the National Cancer Institute's own website. And I did the math and I broke it down. 100,000 people in the course of their lifetime, 12 of them will get oral cancer. If you do the math, that comes down to the same percentage, 0.012%. 97% of all cancer cases, you do that math, it breaks down the same way, 0.012%. You know, most of those smokers, drinkers, a couple of them smokeless tobacco, a couple of them HPV-16, there's going to be one Nobody knows why. They just got cancer. So those are the numbers. For me, that risk is low enough where I'm going to enjoy myself. I started this when I was 53 years old. I figure by the time I run the risk of getting cancer, I'm going to be in my late 80s to early 90s. At that point in time, I don't really care. I've lived a good life. I've enjoyed myself. I'm not going to live my life in fear of catching cancer. The odds are in my favor that I won't extremely in my favor that I won't. 97% chance that I won't. Okay? That's how low it is. So, before you take this journey, I suggest you check the numbers. Call me a liar if you want. 
go to the National Cancer Institute, look at the numbers, do your own math, read. You, you know, I'm a redneck from a hick town. I know how to read, okay? So do you. You can at least spell YouTube.com. That's how you found me. Pull out a calculator. Every cell phone's got one. Do the math. It's pretty low. I'm willing to take the risk because I enjoy this. You know. There, almost everything gives you cancer. Just look at the California regulations. Everything gives you cancer. So, at the end of the day, it's up to you. Are you willing to to take a 3% chance that you might catch oral cancer sometime in your life. For me, yeah, I'm not worried about it. There are far there are things in everyday life that have a much higher than 3% chance of causing you harm. So I'm gonna leave it at that. This is Mikey, the redneck with the calculator and the ability to read, breaking down the numbers. Take it for what you want to. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a cancer researcher, I'm not a statistician. I just know how to read and I know how to use a calculator. I made the decision for myself. I suggest you do your own reading, make the decision for yourself as well. Until the next time, enjoy.